What's up everybody, this is your boy, MediHuman MacaLuco, and today what we're going to do is we're going to follow up with uh, the last video that I made. It was my top 10 favorite DC superheroes. Now today we're going to go over my top 10 favorite DC supervillains. That's right. So, and again, like the last video, a lot of my sources are mostly based from this current uh, DC encyclopedia. Okay. Honestly, if you're a huge DC comic book nerd, this is well worth the investment. Um, <clears throat> let's get into it. So, um, I will say one thing. We're not going to add Deathstroke to this list, and we're not going to add Dr. Light to this list. Now, if you take your sweet time and look into their own personal backstories, I highly suggest you do so. Especially Judas Contract and Identity Crisis. Deathstroke's a creep and a groomer, and Dr. Light, well, I can't say it, I'm not allowed to say it, let's just say there's a reason why Wonder Woman villain Cheetah offed him for a reason. So, without further ado, let's get into the list. Number 10, Bane. That's right, Batman villain Bane. Bane is quite honestly one of the deadliest of Batman's rogues galleries, okay? One of the de deadliest of his rogue galleries. So, Bane is not only incredibly strong with superhuman strength, he is also incredibly smart. He is a strategist, he is analytical, he's calculative, he's deathly, dude, you know. Now, let's not forget about um, the whole Breaking the Bat saga, you know. Man literally just lifted Batman and just, bah. So, he is, without a doubt, a very popular villain for a reason and why we um, unfortunately a lot of meatheads look up to him. He does have some villain points here and there and you know he has his little hero gags and um, there was a point in time where he briefly dressed up like Batman. That's kind of weird but regardless Bane is pretty cool. <clears throat> Number nine, Ray Shot Ghoul, another Batman villain. Now Bat- uh, not Batman. Well I mean yes Batman. Ray Shaul is just as deathly, probably even deathlier than Bane, not in terms of strength, but how he moves, how he has his own little organization, you know, whether you know them as the League of Shadows, the League of Assassins, depending on whatever, whatever canon you follow. You know, Ray Shaul is deadly in his own right. Master Sword Fighter, dude's practically immortal thanks to La E. Lazarus Pit. It's crazy, dude. He's nuts. And that's the thing too, the Lazarus Pit makes him nuts, unfortunately. And look at Jason Todd, look at Red Hood, that's why he's the way he is. Go to here, by the way, but he's not on this list. Number eight on this list is Black Manta, Aquaman supervillain. Now, before you guys get all judgmental and whatever, just know that Black Manta over the years has evolved to be quite the deadly and formidable foe um, this may come off as a little controversial, but he has uh, been written to have autism. Uh, I don't know why they made that a contributing factor to him, but, you know, I see him as a absolute sociopath who has been bent on attempting to take the life of Aquaman. Um, and, of course, he's so deathly that he has other JLA members scared and, you know, he was a brief member of the Suicide Squad for a whole reason, you know. Um, and, of course, that helmet's cool. I'm not going to front. You may think that helmet is goofy, but the fact that that thing shoots uh, death rays, that's sick. Black Manta is good for a whole reason. Number seven on this list is none other than Lord Atrocitus. Lord Atrocitus is the leader of the Red Lantern Corps. He's big, I forgot what planet he's from, but his anger um, <clears throat> stems from the fact that this guy um, quite literally watched this whole people get absolutely obliterated. So he kind of has a Silver Surfer storyline, similarly, 
but instead of you know becoming a herald of Galactus, he inherits the uh, Red Lantern ring. Um, becomes the embodiment of rage, gets all these angry souls from the entire universe, and uh, you know he forms his own little core, and they're very scary. Um, they're angry, and we love his pet Dexter. Um, but yeah, Lord Atrocitus is pretty OP. He is. Um, I like his aesthetic, and I like his backstory. You know, he's a very formidable Green Lantern villain, as long as you know a villain for the other DC superheroes. Number six, Reverse Flash. Now, there's many versions of Reverse Flash, but we're going to talk about Everett Fallen. Now, talk about a psychopath. That dude is from the year 2033 or somewhere in the future, and he has a serious grudge against Barry Allen, the OG Flash. Well, not the OG Flash, but just an overall grudge against Barry Allen. Um, and. It's scary to think that this guy has the ability to travel so fast that he causes all the miserable moments in your entire lifespan. That's kind of fucked up when you really think about it. That's like some genuine horror movie stuff. So, he's kind of scary and he's not to be taken lightly. And I'm so glad, you know, um, Thomas Wayne from Flashpoint, you know, does what he needs to do. If you watch the movie, you know. I highly recommend it. Number five, Amazo. Now, Amazo is a pretty unique character, and I feel like he is underutilized. You know, of course, he um, had a very significant role in Justice League Unlimited. Amazo is a robot who has the ability to mimic the powers of any superhero he comes in contact with. So that means he can go up toe to toe with Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman. Pretty much the entire Justice League roster, realistically. And that's what makes him a very scary villain. But unfortunately, you know, due to character immunity, they always win. They defeat Amazo. He gets blown up, or if he doesn't get blown up, he has a whole identity crisis and then he just fucks off into space and does whatever. So, you know, um, he's a cool guy. Not really. Emotional robot bent on killing people. What can you do? A cool concept. Uh, let's see. Number four, the Faceless Hunter. Now, if you have watched the newest Suicide Squad movie, you already know about Starro. Now, what you don't know about Starro is that he is kind of like Galactus in his own right. Um, Galactus has his own heralds, you know, including Solar Surfer, Fire Lord, but we're not talking about no Marvel comics. We're talking about DC comics. Starro has his own herald named the Faceless Hunter. Now, the Faceless Hunter is this orange elf looking guy. I forgot what planet he is also from, but he goes around telling planets, hey, I got bad news. Um, Starro's gonna come down and conquer your all, and I'm gonna help him do it. Um, and he's a formidable fighter. You know, he's scary. Um, he's almost like Predator, but he was on steroids. Um, yeah, man. And, you the fact that he's not affected by Starro just because he has no face and he's just doing this for shits and gigs, I guess. Very scary individual. I wouldn't recommend fighting him. Number three is Lobo. Now, Lobo is one of my personal favorite Superman villains. Now, of course, he, he does tread along the line of anti-hero in a couple of storylines and, you know, he has helped Superman of the Justice League and what have you. But Lobo is also very deathly and he's also done a lot of messed up stuff, um, including killing off his entire uh, population of people because for whatever reason, Caesarians can only call Caesarians. Um, see, I remember what planet he's from. That's how cool he is. Uh, you know, big old motorbike out here in space, chilling, bounty hunting. He loves dolphins, so he's homies with Aquaman, which is kind of weird, but weird head cannon, what can he do? Um, yeah, definitely love Lobo. Definitely a hilarious character, honestly. Like, you know, he's very meta. He's kind of like, I don't want to compare him too much to Deadpool, but in terms of breaking the fourth wall, that's where the comparison lies. And that's about it. Number two, 
is Ultraman, also known as Evil Superman. Now, I'm not talking about no, no Tom Kung Su uh, Ultraman. No, 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 no. I'm talking about this uh, version of Superman who is from Earth 3. Now, Ultraman is quite literally a angry, uh, belligerent, um, he's pretty much Homelander before Homelander was even a thing. Straight up. Now, not only is this guy very evil in terms of ruling the earth, being belligerent, being cruel to powerless beings, um, he has a very scary power where unlike Superman who's uh, <coughs> weakened by kryptonite, Ultraman can quite literally take kryptonite, crush it, and snort it like it's a drug, and he just goes all out. It's nuts, it's insane, it makes it even scarier. And before I get into my number one, before we get into the number one, here are some honorable mentions that you may feel like should have been in this list. Um, and of course, you go, you guys already have your disagreements and you're probably roasting me in the comments, but you tell me what you think. My honorable mentions include Darkseid, Sinestro, Larklees, Lex Luthor, General Zod, Scarecrow. My handwriting is terrible, I do apologize. Trigon, Mr. Freeze, King Shark, Gentleman Ghost, and Kuro Grodd. Now, those are the honorable mentions. My number one favorite DC supervillain is Black Adam. Now, let me tell you something about Black Adam. He may not look like it, and of course the movie already reiterates this. He does have this little know anti-hero moment where he treads along the line of being a super villain and being a superhero you know and truthfully either way he's still one of my personal favorites he came before captain shizen or captain marvel we won't get into the technicalities of that not yet anyway so shazam is what we'll call him shazam you know didn't come until way after the fact Black Adam is originally from ancient Egypt slash conduct, whatever head can you follow. Man got granted the powers of Shazam by the uh, Grand Wizard. Unfortunately, he got banished, exiled, and tossed through a, another planet or dimension or what have you for 4,000 years in his power form. Comes back, and he's already wrecking havoc as it is. Now, Obviously, with the JSA, well, not the JSA, but the movie with The Rock, that headcanon, it's a cool concept, but let me talk about the comics really fast. So, whatever, whatever you follow, Black Adam was always ruthless, you know, he went out, he was destroying things, offing people, you know, doing whatever, um, and he's gotten to his fair share of squabbles with Superman, Shazam, Wonder Woman, Batman, the whole, the JLA and the JSA, okay? However, he's also joined both those parties, ironically enough, in times of true turmoil and need. Um, Black Adam, you know, along the lines, he tries not to be too ruthless. He kind of goes almost like this Vegeta route, if you will. If you're familiar with Vegeta, he kind of comes off as ruthless, evil, primitive, and then as time goes on, he gets to be a little more softened. He realizes the error of his ways. Black Adam goes through this exact same path. Um, of course, he still has his little judgmental moments because he's a 4,000-year-old Egyptian guy. What can you do? Um, and so with that being said, there's just a lot of contributing factors to Black Adam that make him such a fantastic and marvelous character, dude. You know, um, I, did, I did say he, I mentioned offs a lot of people but there are times where he does it within reason now if you're familiar with dc super villain psycho pirate um he's actually quite a ruthless character he was especially ruthless during the infinity crisis of the eight now black Adam confronted this guy because he did something to one of his people and black Adam got so mad that he literally did this uh pokey of the eye thing but instead of just simply poking his eyes and pushed his entire face in and uh, I really wish I could show you the panel, but it's very gory, and I'm pretty sure that this whole video could get taken down. Um, yeah, Black Adam rules. And 
that's it for my list, everybody. Now, I do have a few announcements to make. Um, <clears throat> Metahuman Macaluco versus Kita and Metahuman Macaluco versus Jeff the Hefe will be dropping soon. I don't have exact dates yet, but they will be coming. And um, as I also continue streaming SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom and uh, Fit Lip Judge, uh, can't speak. This is a North Star uh, Lost Paradise. I will be soon streaming like a Dragon Gaiden. And that's gonna be awesome, dudes. Anyways, thank you all so much. I sincerely appreciate it.